hijab mm -hmm. or veil. Yeah. Um, and then I said, well, uh, it's, it's hard to pick up Muslim girls because sometimes you can only see their two eyes. Once I picked up the same girl twice. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry, <laughs> baby, color laugh? contact. Uh, you know, the, yeah, I mean, it's okay to laugh because, yeah. like, we, it's like Muslim people, we're known a militant. Oh, go kill him. I mean, with his but, thing, it's more like trying to break yeah, down it, break the stereotypes. Down stereotypes and, and, same thing know, with his doing. You know, not do that. Well, but, is that breaking down or reinforcing it? Well, you have to, well, you have you to think? let them know. Yeah. You have to let them know well, that I know I what's going on. I think that if you're going to be a representative of a certain community, as well as, um, you know, reinforcing the funny aspects of every culture. I mean, you can make light of anything. However, educating and slipping in the little um, Humor. Humor. awareness of it, and, you know, then you're just reinforcing the same stereotypes so that next time if someone's seen your show and they see someone who is wearing a hijab, they'll say, oh, they'll think of your joke. Not, yeah. not if they've seen the whole show, because I have to let them know that, okay, I'll make fun of myself, I'll make fun of my religion, but at the same time, I'll pick on your religion and make fun of about that. That's only mm -hmm. fair. I, I want to come back to equal opportunity insults right. and, and humor in just a second, but okay, we have sorry. to break for commercial. Yeah, let's take a break. We'll be back in a sec. You know, Rezo, a number of years ago, when uh, uh, Salman Rushdie was hiding out, uh, I talked to him uh, in a sort of high security situation, and we discussed the, the, the possibility that uh, after you take into account the political opportunism of the fatwa uh, in Iran and so on, that maybe one of the problems was that he had tried to be funny about Islam and that there isn't a lot of humor uh, in Islam. Is there anything to that? Yeah. It should be more humor than militancy. Hmm. If there's bad, it has to be good. Hmm. That's the only way to kind of rise, to show, look at it differently. Right? But are there, are there stand-up comics in Tehran? <laughs> no, no. It, it, well, you know what? I think they should. In fact, when I did the tour for the funny Jews and Muslims, I, I don't want to take away what Raul's trying to do. Yes, I do I, want to I go agree, back to Raul. I agree, I agree with what he's you, doing 100% too. Yeah, uh, We're in this kind of in the same boat, yeah. basically. Okay. But well, it should be. You, you mentioned before we were talking about equal opportunity insults. You, know, you take a, 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 a cartoon on te television like South Park, which, you know, truly insults and satirizes every ethnicity, every race, every religion. Does that somehow make it all okay? Or, or you know, how, how do you begin? Because yeah. yeah, the, the other thing that, I, that I've heard sometimes is, well, it's not that we object to uh, individual stereotypes. It's just when there's a preponderance because mm. there aren't enough good images to balance it out. Yeah. Who's to do the math here? Who's to hand out the certificates to say a certain ethnic group has advanced far enough in society so that now we can have 10% of funny and insulting stereotypes? I mean, yeah. How do you I do think, it? I think one thing we have to do is go back a little and think about um, people who are watching media, watching TV, we don't know what what range of education or awareness they have so when they are viewing something it does remain it remains fixed in their head and the danger in um, the different ethnic stereotypes is that when they are reinforced and static that's all people see and there's no for example bringing up Apu again he's constantly in the same role and that's dangerous because it, he's not going out of that role and that creates a reinforcement of the stereotype. The bombardment of it. Yeah. Right. I mean, he does right. have another life outside of his convenience store, and he is, and just Why? I think that's. Why sorry? don't you think they are giving us a credit? That's a real question. Why? Why? Why you don't see? Why? Why do? Why? Why? Why don't you see this color on Hollywood movies? Do you know why? Because they think there's no market for it. They're not mm -hmm. willing to give it a chance. If you give it a chance, there is a market of it. Look at Jackie Chan, Jet Li, all those guys. Exactly. Right? They're coming to it now. Hmm. I wonder if, if since 9-11 things have got worse, how do you feel? Um, uh, I, I ask this because there, there's a, a cartoon I have here that uh, I hope we'll be able to see on camera eventually. Mm -hmm. It was published in uh, Berkeley, California, student newspaper uh, called the, do you remember what it was called? Uh, the Daily Californian. Now, in it are two uh, Muslims who are supposed to be, I think, caricatures of Osama bin Laden, and they're in the palm, clearly, of Satan. Uh, 
and one of them is saying to the other, we made it to paradise, now we will meet Allah and be fed grapes and serviced by 70 virgins and da 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 da. All right. It's ha it has been commented on that that, that, that particular aspect of, of afterlife, from a Western point of view, is kind of, you know, vulgar, <laughs> even yeah. pornographic, and yeah. so it's been made fun of. But if it is a political cartoon about an individual, mm -hmm. why are qu people uh, quick to make uh, uh, ethnic generalizations about it? This that's raised a lot of trouble. Yeah. There were a lot of protests. Yeah, that's Please. the main thing. I mean, it's just, if you only have this one side of the coin, you know, and you only have the stereotypes, and you only have the, uh, you know, misinterpretations, and you assume this is what's happening for everyone. I mean, it's the same way how, like, uh, you know, from historical, like you were saying, with the minstrel uh, shows around the time of... Uh, uh, slavery and then um, also like the treatment of Asian Americans around the time of World War II, you know, the internment camps. And I, I think like just in the last 10 years, um, since the Gulf War, first one, and since the first World Trade Center attack, it's like things have kind of shifted more and it's, uh, you know, it's the same basic uh, generalizations that have happened to all minorities uh, before and it's just, you know, kind time. of moved on to us. It's know? just, you know what, the way I look at it is just time. Because if you think about it, even with the hip hop music, where Raul, where, where Raul is a DJ, even if you notice the hip hop music, now they're mixing Indian tunes with hip hop songs. Just now you see that compilation coming up, and you all you've seen that in the South Asian underground music yeah. of Great yeah. Britain for five, yeah. ten years now. It is yeah. fantastic. In England, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In yeah. England, it's because huge. because the immigrants to England. Were, 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 you know, suffering assaults by skinheads exactly, when I was a yeah. school kid, right. and that society has advanced sufficiently yeah. through the ranks of society. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's a mainstream thing too, because like Rasul was saying, like uh, any type of uh, you know culture stuff or even music and even hip hop in general, it's not like uh, the uh, knowledgeable and the political and the conscious artists have not known uh, about you know South Asian people or that. If you look at it and you trace it back. There's a, you know, there's a knowledge of Gandhi, there's a knowledge of many things, but it's just in the mainstream, I think, uh, for people who are very, uh, like Pooja was saying, uninformed, and then they only see the right. generalizations, then all of a sudden they say, oh, wow, they're Indian people, wow, let's take a uh, song and, you know, let's sample and do that, so, uh, you know. Interesting, I uh, made a list, uh, actually I stole this from <laughs> the uh, American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee. Here's a list of movies that have come out recently, in the last four or five years, uh, that have featured, you know, rampant Arab bashing. Uh, Patriot Games, Death Before Dishonor, Iron Eagle, they all sound like, Ameri you know, military kind of movies. The American President, Executive Decision, Navy Seals, and Operation Condor earned a Dishonor Award at the oh, National wow. Convention <laughs> of the American Arab Ant Anti-Discrimination Committee. Um, you know, writers write this stuff. Someone is giving them license to do so. This is a matter for writers, it seems to me, because if you're writing a screenplay, you could say, no, I don't want to write that kind of thing yeah, in. Uh, so, in case anybody viewing, you know, thinks we're being a little fussy, I do think that yeah. there's something yeah, to it. Definitely. You know?